Hello, it's Mitesh here from LANet and welcome to our course, Getting Started with Azure Infrastructure as Code. This is part one. We'll um, talk about the tool setup and, and getting our environment ready. So in, in terms of the whole course, we look at the um, the course slides here. Um, this section is the tools. The next one, we'll look at the, the basics of, of our scripts, um, looking at how we can deploy um, to Azure Resource Manager via PowerShell. And then in the third one, we'll look at uh, how do we secure our code, code using um, Azure Key Vaults. And also in part four, we'll look at um, running uh, release pipelines um, in Azure so that, uh, to do basically um, automated deployments. So in this section, what we'll do is we'll install um, Visual Studio Code, um, add some extensions and PowerShell commandlets. Then we need to install Git for Windows. And then we'll, what we do is um, create an Azure DevOps project and repository. And then we'll synchronize our Visual Studio Code to that repository. We'll add some files commit them so we just get get familiar with setting our setting up our environment and managing our code files committing files saving files adding files those kind of things and then we're in a position to be ready to do some um, deployments in the next video so there's lots of tools and methods that we can use so we're just going to look at some of the common ones and the microsoft native ones um, so one of those tools is azure devops so that we use that as our uh, back-end repository for our source code and then we'll use Visual Studio Code. So that's a tool that we use on our own um, machines to manage and edit code. We can do a lot more stuff with it as well. We can also deploy code and, and many other things to other environments, well, environments as well, not just um, Azure. And we use Git for Windows to help us manage the synchronization of, of our repo. So Azure DevOps gives us a, a Git repo and we'll use Git for Windows uh, or we'll install it at least and do some basic configuration to allow us to, to do that check-in, check-out functionality type stuff. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll download uh, Visual Studio Code and there's a link there. Um, all this will show in this video. And the next one is install Git for Windows once you've done VS Code and we'll... Um, Go through that as well and set some you know just some global um settings for for git just to let it know um who we are you know username and email and such and we'll kind of do a similar thing for for vs code so we'll install the azure module so um azure has uh, we've got a command line interface we've also got uh, powershell but in order to use it we need to install some modules so this, i've got some example modules here that we can do we've also added ms online for 365 as well in case you need to do some 365 coding and then we look at the extensions so there's a bunch of extensions in vs code that will help make our lives easier so we've put some um, on, on, on the list here on the left. So um, those ones you you sh really should use if you're going to start deploying to Azure. And the, there's there's a ton of other stuff and there's some um, recommended ones on the right there as well. Okay. And then what we'll do with our training account, we're going to um, Azure DevOps, create a project, um, look up some uh, permissions. We'll create a repo and clone it and kind of synchronize it in, in, in VS Code. And there's some links here, so we'll provide all the links as well as part of um, this course too. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is download Visual Studio Code. Um, so we go to code.visualstudio.com, um, download the latest stable build. Okay. Just press OK to this one just to um, say it's going to install it for everyone on the machine. Accept. And then accept the defaults. OK, so the first thing we need to do is install some extensions. So we'll go with the, um, the main Microsoft Azure ones. So if we type in um, Azure Tools, we want those ones so that'll select um, a bunch of um, common extensions that we would um, use to help us um, write code for various um, objects within Azure. Okay, and then the other one, uh, a useful one is, and we'll look at what these do later on once we start um, uh, looking at the code. Just make that a bit bigger. Okay, um, another one, so that's snippets. What we can also use is the PowerShell one. 
So you can see that's a PowerShell one by Microsoft. Install that one. And another really useful one, uh, if you start working with is your policy is that the policy one. So we'll add that. And also um, a non-Microsoft one here is the ARM template viewer, which is really good. Cool. So that's all the um, extensions that we need. So I'll just ignore these for now. And then we'll, what we should do, once these are installed, we need to close down Visual Studio Code. So there's two things we need to install. this code and the Git for Windows. So we'll wait for this one. And meanwhile, we'll go, we'll open up the Git for Windows and get that downloaded. Download that. Okay, let that go. So let's show that and open that. And again, all these are defaults except for the default editor. So that's this screen here. We'll just select um, Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor. Okay, and let's check on our thing is still still in this one here. Okay, so let's close that one. I'll just pause the video for a sec while this finishes. Okay, so we need to close Visual Studio first before we um, uh, configure the Git component there. So let's just have pinned it to my start here. So if I just open that up, and then what we need to do is go to the terminal. So we'll just click on that and just wait a second for that to start up. Okay, so that can um, take a few seconds. I just pause the video there. Um, so what we need to do is just uh, put in some of these configuration options here. Um, specify um, uh, who the user is and their email address and how to get credentials. So I'll just click on that. And that's basically um, the start of getting a Visual Studio code ready there. Um, once we should also look um, at um, how we can sign in as well. So if we go to the um, view command uh, palette here, if we like one of the components that we um, selected was the Azure one. So we should see um, the Azure sign in. So we could um, click on that and get signed in as well. So let's open up Internet Explorer, for example, and do it that way. And it'll ask us who, who the user is. So let's choose our training user. And then that will actually link our Azure account up or our Azure AD account up. So the last thing we need to do uh, and install is the PowerShell commandlet. So by, by default, Windows doesn't have the, the PowerShell modules. So uh, we need to install the modules and um, I'll, I'll put the links to um, the code here um, with the documentation and the video. Um, but essentially, we're just installing the Azure module, um, the Azure AD module, and also the Office 365 module, just in case we're going to work with that. So, so they're all ready uh, when we need them. Also, remember to run Visual Studio in admin mode as well uh, to install these uh, commandlets. So the next step really is to start looking at um, code repository. So Visual Studio is a good place to uh, manage our code. Um, and we can link that up to um, a source repository and that source repository could be on Azure DevOps. Okay, so let's look, go over to Azure DevOps. So let's open that up. And if we just go dev.azure.com, what we can do is that we can see we're already signed in here. So we've created a, a project here, but what we'll do is I'll, sh I'll show you the steps of, of creating a, 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 new, a new project just so, so we don't miss any steps. So let's just call that training two, for example. We'll create a private um, uh, repositories um, so we don't have our code open to the public. Um, and we'll just select the basic, the standard template here. And if we click create on there, let's just wait a second for that and I'll pause the video. Okay, that didn't actually take very long. So it's given us uh, the basic structure of a project here. So we've got the overview section here, and then we've, we've also got um, something in Azure DevOps called boards and work items. So we can manage work items, um, even project tasks, sprints, etc., inside this area here, and we can assign tasks to people. Uh, we may cover some of that in another video. 
Um, we can also use build and, and release pipelines in here to actually go and deploy our code. So um, again, we could we will visit that later as well. And um, we've got some um, uh, test plans and artifacts. If we look at project state uh, settings here, for example, and this is where we can look at our um, teams who's got access to this project, um, as, as, as well as many other things as well. So if we just start with um, teams, for example, uh, so it's created a project team for us inside here. And let's put one user inside there, which is the user I'm logged in now uh, with. So if we wanted to add other people, we could click on that and, and add uh, more members or add another AD group or whatever we want to do. What it also does by default, it gives us a, a repository, a source code repository. So this is where all our code will live um, in the back end. And then what we can do is use that um, repository um, to um, manage our files, make changes locally in our Visual Studio code and then keep them in sync. And that's how teams can work together um, um, uh, with these repos. And what we could do there is, is clone this um, in v VS Code. So we could we could try that. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go and, and do that. So there's lots of different ways. So let's just um, so initialize this first to create the readme file. Okay, and then what we want to do um, is is clone in VS Code. So do clone, clone in VS Code, and that will ask if I can open uh, VS Code. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Now it's going to ask me where do you want um, this code to live locally. So in in my case, I'm just going to create a folder and C for that DevOps. Uh, I may also create a folder for this project. Uh, let's call it training one, and that's where it's going to uh, deploy the uh, copy the source code down to. And it's going to ask me to log in. So that's my user. Uh, would I like to open it? I would, thank you. And there I can see my file here, which is awesome. So I can see this file, and th this is just a way to um, view um, uh, the readme file and that. So it's, it's kind of like HTML, but this this stuff here is like a, a heading one from what heading two. I could do two hashes, for example, and these hyphens are like bullet points. So if we, if we do go back to our, our um, file in there, look at this file for example and that's how it looks there and um, we can also get a, a, a nicer view of it there so if you want to put any project um, information and links etc we can put them into that file be it's a useful place to put it so now i can see uh, my project here my re repository has got one file in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, add a couple of files and then we'll sync synchronize them up, up towards your devops OK, so I could create a file here, for example, I could um, create new folders, new files. I can also uh, um, add them to, to the uh, local location. So, for example, I've got some sample files here, so I'm just going to paste them in. So that, remember the, the location that we created was DevOps Training 1, um, and it's created that for us here because the um, project's called Training 2. Um, and there's our readme file, so that's our local copy. I'm just going to... Um, paste this folder in here and then you can see that appear up here and it's showing as green because it's not been uploaded to um, as your DevOps yet so what we can do so again I could create the files through here I could uh, paste them into the uh, folders um, we'll, look, we'll take a look at these files in a moment but what we'll first do is get them into as your DevOps so I can see this icon here that show me okay this is the source control I've got five changes here and that'll be my uh, files here so if I do that let's put a, a message to commit those changes and add is equal uh, folder let's click on that and let's just save save all those files and then no stage would I like to um, stage all your changes and commit them directly yeah let's click on that so I can choose to stage them um, separately or I can just let it do them for me that. And then if I, yeah, I can see this here, I've got a, a synchronization to do um, up upwards, so a push. And then if I go back to my Azure DevOps now, let's, let's just come off there, look at commit, commits. So I can see here what I did, that's my comment that I just did, added a SQL folder. Now if I look in files, I can see um, I've got my template files in here. 
So that's great. We've got a nice um, uh, repository here. We've got it locally. I can make changes um, and then I can go, go into here, make changes and synchronize those changes with, with the back end. Um, obviously, it's got all version control and everything in there as well. So thanks for watching that. So in this one, we just looked at um, um, setting up the tool. So this is part one. Um, in the next one, we'll look at um, using the code. We'll look at the code files, the structure of them, and we'll look to uh, deploy something into Azure as well. Uh, so uh, look out for part two. Thank you.